Guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of SoCal Watch Review. This is episode number three. I got a very special guest with me. I got P. Ross from Ross Wrist Watch Love. How's it going, Ross? It's going, man. What's going on? Thanks for having me. Hey, not much. So <laughs> let me let me tell the listeners what happened, and this is very funny. Today is uh, Sunday, and actually, we recorded this episode yesterday, Saturday morning. Uh, I woke up super early because I am in Southern California, and I am three hours uh, behind uh, Mr. P, and we recorded an episode about almost an hour long. Well, I'm going through this uh, website or through this app, and it just, for whatever reason, it didn't work. <laughs> so it took us almost a whole day yesterday trying to figure out how to make it work. So here we are record, re-recording this episode for the second time. <laughs> yes. So it, the, the struggle, right? <laughs> yes, sir. But, but anyways, um, yeah, let's, let's jump into this, guys. Um, we're going to be talking about some really interesting things because uh, P also runs a YouTube channel. He's not only a collector, but just like me, he's uh, doing that YouTube thing. And, and he, uh, him and I see eye to eye in a lot of things because it, the struggle is real, guys, out there to uh, with this YouTube thing and getting subscribers and likes and views. And uh, yeah, it's not as easy. <laughs> but uh, one of the interesting things that I uh, think I want to talk about, and I think it's interesting for every watch collector out there, is Watch Gang. Now, Pete, you've been a member of uh, Watch Gang for how long now? About 15 months. About 15 months, all right. And if you don't mind, explain to the people, what is Watch Gang? Uh, how does it work, and what tier are you signed up for? Um, it's a subscription-based service where you get a watch every month. Um I am signed up for the original tier, which is $30 a month. Um, they had three th tiers, $30, $99, and $299. I'm $30 a month, so. So what's the whole premise of Watch Game? Do they send you a watch every month, or what? It, what's, what's the deal with it? What? Yeah, they... On their website, they, they let you choose what type of watch you like, and they try to get the best match for you. You know what I mean? So every month, they try to send you a watch close to your preferences. You know what I'm saying? To your account preferences, basically. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, okay. So when you sign up, is it fair to say that you have to kind of say, okay, what's your style? Oh, I like right. chronographs, I like divers, and with that said, they kind of curate things uh, for you. Right. But, <clears throat> right. but, but you get like, a surprise basically every month. <laughs> you yeah, don't know what yeah you're basically, you don't know what you're getting. You know what I'm saying? They mm. do try hard to get close. You know what I mean? But sometimes it don't meet the mark. You know, I've had a couple watches that just didn't, that I didn't like at all. So, Got but, it. So, but for the most part, I think I've gotten more that I like than I didn't like. Got it. Now, what, what would you say the ratio would be? Because if you're signed up for 15 months, I mean, that means you've gotten 15 watches. So out of the right. 15 watches, how many have you liked? How many have you disliked? Uh, I probably really disliked about four of them. Okay. Yeah. So with that said, do you think the subscription is worth the money? At $30, yes. Because you're supposed to get a watch between fifty and a hundred and fifty dollars, so yeah. So that's the whole premise. So you pay thirty dollars, but in reality, the the worth of the watch is a lot more. So you're getting it's, them it's the, supposed to be a lot more. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, of course, you and I know with MSRPs and everything. I mean, right? They obviously play around with that with that price, but. Right. Uh, I guess with that said, do you think it would be a better idea to save the, the money uh, and rather than pay every month, just save it and buy a, a more expensive watch that you actually like, that you actually pick? I mean, yeah, it's always better to save up and get something that you actually like. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's always better, but uh, right now, at this time, I'm really trying to get like my daughter into watches. And it is working with the watch gang thing because I kind of pass along watches that I don't want to her. And she's actually wearing them and enjoying them. So, like, okay. at, at, for the price right now for her, I think it's actually working. So, but yeah, it's always better to 
you know what I'm saying, save that 30 in, you know what I'm saying, in the year. You did the math. I think it was like $360 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so if we do a year, so 12 times what you're paying the 30 bucks, yeah. we're looking at $360 for the year. Yeah, but yeah. you, uh, so $360, if, if you were to save for it, and if we really think about it, I mean, you could get a, what, Seiko SKX for yeah, 200 absolutely. bucks. You know, you could get a, maybe a pre-owned Seiko right. SAR 033, but again, you only get one watch, not all right. these watches. Right. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention in our previous recording is at one point, are you going to get maybe all these watches that you're like, you know what, I got too many of them. Would you consider selling some of them to maybe get that piece? Now that you experience all this and your daughter kind of wore them and you're like, hey, right. okay, we, we, we experienced them. We're kind of bored now. Let's um, sell them and maybe get something better. Is the, that, something the, the, that is definitely an option. Okay. Definitely an option for sure. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Well, at what point then would you uh, decide to cancel? You've been with this watch gang uh, for fifteen months, which is four hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Been with them. So right. At what point are you going to cancel the service? If I was to get consecutive duds like bad watches, I would cancel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I, I can't see myself going past three years with this. You know what I mean? But. We'll see if, if, like, starting next month, if I got, like, consecutive duds. I say this every month, like, okay, I'm counting the duds, you know what I mean? Like, so if I got consecutive, like, three in a row, it's curtains. So, so at that point, uh, that, that, that's a very interesting thing you just said. So, at that point, if you were to cancel the the service, are you still going to continue to take those $30 and allocate them towards something else and maybe – Save, 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 or do oh, you just? I'm already, I'm already saving for something else, so I would just take that thirty and put it with that, which it'll make what I want get more quicker. So. <clears throat> yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I know you mentioned yesterday also about hoarding, right? Yeah. Uh, tell the good people how many watches you got in your collection. Oh God, <laughs> a little over 140, 150. That's ridiculous, man. That's so, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now, I guess the last question uh, about watch gang is. With everything said, with everything you just kind of went through, is this a service that you would recommend to to other collectors? I would absolutely recommend the original tier uh, for someone just getting into watches, like if they want to build a collection uh, pretty quick. Because um, no one with who who I consider myself broke, so no one broke like me is going to get into the game buying a Rolex. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. You know, like I, I, I would, cause, yeah, I would definitely do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now check it out. Um, with that mindset, right? So let's let's keep that in mind. So you recommend the original tier for somebody getting into watches. With. Yes. We're looking at nineteen dollars. Now we take nineteen dollars, multiply it by twelve. We're looking at about two hundred and twenty-eight dollars, give or right. take, for the whole year. Now, I actually did a video uh, where I talk about building a four watch collection right. for less than $250. If I remember correctly, I think yeah. I came up to $240 and 60 cents. So it's about, right. you know, a little bit more. Right. And you than, did straps too, right? For a little bit more. So check okay. it out. So, yeah. so my price for the four watches came out to $240 and 60 cents. Mm -hmm. Your watch gang for 12 months came out to $228, mm -hmm. which means for $12.60 more, my way, you actually get to pick your watches. Right. And let me just kind of recap. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's on YouTube under my channel, SoCal Watch Reviews. But I recommended four watches. And basically what it was, I gave you a chronograph. I gave you a diver. I gave, her, gave you a more dressy kind of everyday piece. And I also gave you, uh, what was the other watch that, that we talked about? Let me uh, kind of recap this. Was it the Tamex? Uh, that, no, that was, a, that was a chronograph. It was actually okay. a Casio. Okay. So for for 200 like I said, $240, the, the watches that I picked was uh, uh, Seiko, SMK 793, mm -hmm. beautiful blue face, uh, blue face, I'm sorry, Sunray style, uh, and... Um, it had an automatic movement with seven S to six movement. That was at ninety six dollars. Then when mm. I went with the Timex, that was a beautiful watch. The Weekender, you're looking at that uh, what forty six dollars eighty five. So right. that one's quartz. Then we moved on to uh, 
it's a Bostec amphibia, so it's a Russian watch. It's either you love it, you hate it, but right. it's pretty cool. I mean, I think it's very charming. Yeah. Uh, 200, water res- 200 meters water resistance. It's an automatic movement in-house, by the way, uh, for $87.91. And then the icing on the cake, of course, is it'll guy. Nothing to rave about, but it's, it's a good little watch. It's a Casio F91W right. for less than $10. And you are correct. I did recommend some straps for the good people as well. Uh, so if you got those four watches, you got four straps, and you got the little uh, spring bar removal, you're looking at $292.13. So right. with that said, you can go also that route and pick your own watches. So either way you guys go, there's, there's the beauty of watch collecting. There's no right. There's no wrong reason. You do whatever you feel is right for you. (laughs) Uh, Absolutely. Right? I mean, it's just, to me, collecting watches is more of a personal preference, right? So if you like a pink watch, you go ahead and you buy that pink watch because that's what speaks to you. Oh, yeah. And you should care less about um, what other people think. But I'm being a hypocrite, and I'll tell you guys why in a minute because we're going to segue into... um, a very controversial topic. Well, like I know this was kind of controversial because a lot of people are against watch gang, especially the collectors that are really against it. Have you found that to be true in your videos when you put them out? Uh, no, I've actually had pretty good response from my watch gang videos. So I haven't had that yet from watch gang. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. And I've seen it with other people, other YouTubers kind of bashing, you know, the, the yeah, uh, the whatever the subscriptions, or right? Like that. But uh, and, and I guess correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not very familiar with the type of watches they sent. But out of the 15 watches that you got, how many were mechanical and how many were quartz? I think I got like two mechanical and the rest were quartz. Oh, wow, yeah, well, that's a small ratio. I mean, yeah. I, and how do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, that's um, that's not that <laughs> you know. You, you, you know, you, you love mechanical automatics, so I was really expecting more mechanical automatics, but uh, the watches that I did like still were good. So so what's that whole thing? Um, and I, I saw it somewhere, I don't know where, that they randomly send you a Rolex or something? Or what's, what's the deal with that? Oh, uh, shoot. Every Friday they do a drawing for a Rolex. Do you have if to you're a member. Watches? You, but yeah, you have to any sub- you have to subscribe and you have to get a watch every month or something like that. You have to actually be subscribed to their service in order to uh, be involved in a Rolex giveaway. But they do oh. that. They do a uh, Seiko Saturday and they do a Tag Tuesday. Huh. So they do several like giveaways, and I think once you win them for a year, um, you get a. Uh, Entries to two Rolex giveaways. So, so is that what you're hoping for? <laughs> to get a Rolex one of these days? I never, I've, I've watched them. I've watched the giveaway once on Facebook, but I don't, I don't expect nothing like that. No. Hell no. You don't believe it? It's no. probably all rigged. Not, not, not for me anyway, you know, so. Yeah, these, these guys are a little too smart, but, uh, but okay, cool. cool. That, that that covers that topic. And um, what I really wanted to talk about is Invicta. So you are a big Invicta collector. How many do you have in your collection? Uh, a little over forty, probably. That's a lot of Invictas, my friend. That is that is crazy. Um, and what is it really about Invicta that speaks to you? If you have that many, the design. You know what I'm saying? I, I like. Uh, oh my god. I just think they're great watches. You know, I don't I don't see what some of the people who dislike Invicta see, but uh you know what I do see it. You know what, but um some of those watches just speak to me and I, I just like them. I like the way they look. What is it about them? Just the aggressive look of them? Because most of them do look pretty aggressive. It, right? it, it it really depends, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't, the only aggressive looks I really get into is like the Venom, you know what I'm saying? Some of the other, other, uh, most, most of the ones I really like are like the Divers and especially from the Speciality Collection. And those are like not as aggressive as your Venoms and stuff like that. 
Yeah, no, I, I actually don't have anything against the uh, the Pro Diver, and that's a, that's a very charming looking watch. But again, it is a homage piece to Submariner, right? So, right. do you own that watch? You own a Pro Diver? Yes. Flood? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Is it the automatic version or the quartz? Automatic. Automatic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. It has yeah. a Seiko movement in it. Everybody? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty good value. I mean, that's something that that I could definitely see myself recommending to somebody kind of getting into watches. That's probably right. the most charming one for me. Yeah. Um, but and you are getting a, a quality movement in it, of course. You're getting a, a Seiko movement. Right. Um, and I know that um, one of the things that I don't particularly like about Invicta. It's not so much the look because obviously they don't speak to me as, as far as mm -hmm. the look goes. But also, um, and I don't know how you feel about this. The the whole thing with the MSRP, what's up with that? I mean, they say, oh, this watch is worth I don't know nine hundred dollars, right. but you're getting it for a hundred dollars. This is ridiculous. Um, right? How do you how do you feel about that? I mean, it's it's it, it's foolish for them to do that. You know what I mean? Um, a, a lot of pieces that Invictus had, I'll give you an example, like some of their diamond pieces off the charts. I think I remember seeing one for like 4000 and it had dropped it down oh. to uh, some like uh, $1,300 or something like that. Oh wow! And I'm just kind of like, it, I feel like if I bought something like that, like the, the value wouldn't be there if I wanted to flip it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know what I mean? I so... Well, to me, to be honest with you, I see it more as deception, right? Because right. Absolutely. you're you're in the watch world, so you you know these things. I mean, you you have 140 watches in your collection. You right. understand very well the value of a watch and right. and different things, moving parts. But somebody watching QBC, somebody going into Costco or Macy's or whatever, and they're going to go in and not knowing anything about watches. All they know is that right. they tell time. That's it. So when they see this watch and and they see that number right associated with it, they're gonna go, oh, okay, for a hundred bucks, I'm gonna buy this thousand dollar watch. Right. And they walk around thinking in their head that they're walking around with with that kind of money on their wrist. When in right. reality, you just got played, right? By right. Yeah, absolutely. That's not true. So to when me, when the, when the watch was worth a hundred anyway. So and, and I'm gonna tell you an interesting story. I actually fell for that so um uh what happened is uh and and, and i'm going to tell you the story and then go into another topic that i think is very interesting which is public perception about this mm -hmm. brand but what happened is i i live in california my mom lives in indianapolis so we don't we don't live in the same city we don't live in the same state so we hardly see each other so when i did see her about oh god it was 10 years ago or something like that or probably even a little bit more I was into watches, but it was I wasn't a collector by any means or stretch of the imagination. I just like watches, the aesthetics of them. I went to go visit her. She wanted to give me a special gift to commemorate me being there. Uh, so we went to the store, and I fell for it. I saw this Invicta that looked very cool. It had an automatic movement. I didn't knew nothing about automatic movements, but it looked cool. Mm -hmm. It had a display case back. It was a square, kind of like Frank Mueller style looking watch and it was pretty right. cool i mean i i give them that some other watches do look very impressive for the price and if you don't know what you're looking at they, they look impressive right so she gave it to me she was super excited and i had it for a few years well, it wasn't until uh three years ago that i really got into watch collecting because of youtube you know influencers tgb whatnot and I started seeing a bunch of negative press against Invicta, and I was like, "Well, wait, wait a minute. What, what is it about Invicta that's bad? The design, and you know, the, it was mostly the design that people criticized, right? And the, per the public perception about, um, or, or the the whole thing about the MSRP. So the public perception really was negative towards Invicta, right. and I fell for that trap. And I said, you know what? I don't want to be caught dead walking around with this thing on my wrist. Right. So I I basically didn't wear it anymore. I put it away. Well. Fast forward to year two of me watch collecting. I just said, you know what? I I want a more expensive piece. What I wanted was this was the Omega Speedmaster, and I didn't have enough money to to get it. So I sold right. off a couple pieces, and that's one of them. Uh, and, and the reason why, I mean, I guess the public perception was stronger than the whole idea of my mom giving it to me as a gift so anyways i sold it about the speedmaster told my mom and i know she was a little upset because she felt like hey 
yeah, okay, I get the whole thing about you not wanting an Invicta, but at the end of the day, I gave you that gift. That, that gave you that watch as a gift, and you just right. sold it. It doesn't make sense. But, you know, of course, I try to explain to her, well, now the piece is really going to represent that. Is this Omega Speedmaster? I don't think she saw it. She just she was happy for me for getting something that I really wanted. But, right. but what I'm trying to tell you people is, uh, I, I'm when I when I said to just buy whatever speaks to you uh, and don't care about what other people think. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with that, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm 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 guilty of that. I fell fell for the trap. But uh, anyways, that was a long story. Uh, let me uh, let me talk about the video that you just recently made. I know you made a video about um, haters and how people feel about Invicta, and that was a very very strong video. Uh, right. Can you tell us what it was about? And well, <sighs> some, sometimes people can try to be harsh, and people can try to troll you to make you feel a certain kind of way. I just kind of wanted to put the video out there for people who may come across one of my videos and try to do me like that. Like, you can't do me like that. You can't. Because I wear what I want to wear when I want to wear. You know what I mean? Um, You know, my thing is, I would never tell nobody what to do with their money. Uh Um, Like, I have a friend. um, He has, shit, 30, 40 movement watches. Oh my God, this guy loves movement. And you know, I wouldn't buy movement, but you know, if that's what he likes, I love it. You know what I mean? Like, he's into the watch hobby. Like, regardless of what gets you into watches, you should be happy. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people aren't into watches. You know what I mean? A lot, in my experience, a lot of people that I know don't even wear a watch half the time. They got cell phones and looking at their cell phone for time. You know what I mean? So when you have a friend or someone you know that's in the watches, regardless of what type of watch it is, you should be happy. Because a lot of people nowadays ain't wearing watches. So my thing with the video was, I think I got one negative comment about him, uh, that Victor that I put on my channel. You know what I mean? And I'm just kind of like, why is it so important for other people to tell you about what you're wearing when they didn't pay for it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like you don't have to like it. No, you don't have to like it. But when you get to the point to where you tell somebody, and I've seen, I've seen the videos all over the internet, like, like people use the word why I hate Invicta. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, that's pretty damn strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, although I like Rolex, a lot of people don't like Rolex. You know what I mean? But I don't see those type of videos like why I hate Rolex. You see what I'm saying? You know. Well, yeah, yeah, they'll get a a bunch of backlash from people. and People will just hate on their comments. They'll probably get a bunch of dislikes. Right. yeah, no, 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 it's right. fair. And, and I mean, I know there's big entities out there that hate Invicta so much that they ban them. I don't know if you know about Red Bar. I mean, Red Bar is huge around the world. Uh-huh. And one of their rules is that you cannot wear mm-hmm. Invicta to their meetings. And yeah, I'm familiar yeah. with that, yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, we don't want it. We don't want it. Uh, I, right. I know the, the main guy did an interview with uh, Scottish Watches, which, by the way, mm-hmm. amazing podcast. Love those guys, uh, Rick and Ricky. Um, and basically what it was... Um, they had the guy, right, and they talked about Red Bar, and he just basically said, look, I don't really hate Invicta, but I just don't want people wearing them, and I don't want the thing being photographed, and then it's going to float around the internet and, you know, promote them because they're just basically, you know, homage and garbage right. and this and that. And, I mean, I get that, but, right. man, that's, that's pretty strong. That's pretty strong, right. especially with, uh, I mean, you and I live in the, in the U.S. Where, where are you located? Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, yeah. well, I don't know if you see this, but I definitely see it in my neck of the woods. There's just so much, um, I don't want to use the word racism, but I mean, that's kind of what it's coming down to here in the U.S. The political climate is, is just crazy. So right. the, the way that I kind of view this whole negative thing against Invicta, is, it's almost like that, right? It's like you're wearing an Invicta. It's almost like they're, they're, they're being racist against you. Right. And uh, I mean, me being Hispanic and you African-American, we've, firsthand 
have experiences because of oh, yeah. what you told me and, and believe me right. I, i've been there guys and and it's it's not a nice thing you know it's it, it makes you question humankind and why people act the way that they act or because they're a certain race they're superior to you right and i feel in the watch world it's the same thing so because you're wearing a rolex or a Patek, you're better than me because i'm wearing an invicta or i'm wearing a seiko right that's just not the case we right. all understand there's different tiers uh of just things in the world out there right whether it be an automotive uh thing or a clothing thing or food thing or restaurant whatever we all understand there's different levels, but there is no reason for hating and, and, and doing all this. At the end of the day, it comes down to marketing. Thousands of years ago, when people didn't have brands, when brands didn't exist, bread was just bread, water was just water. Now right. you have a boss water, a Fiji water. And it's, right, it's, right. It's, like, mm -hmm. it's all a marketing gimmick. Um, I, I do understand, and I think you agree with me as well, that obviously the quality is not the same. You cannot compare a Patek to no. an Invicta. <laughs> no, we we get that. No. But but the takeaway for me uh, with this whole thing is is to stop hating and embrace, uh, like P said, embrace somebody wearing a watch because it's right. awesome that they're in the hobby. Whatever brings right. them to the hobby, that's just kind of awesome, right? Right. So, yes, sir. Uh, so yeah. if you hey, think. Hey, hey. And you know what? Not to cut you off. And you know what? People will eventually get it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, although my man, he got like 30 NVMTs. You know what I'm saying? They actually came out with an automatic movement that he bought. Right. You know what I mean? And like, he will eventually get it. You know what I mean? And with people yeah. like me in his life telling me like, yo, you need to check out Seiko. You need to do this. You know what I'm saying? You know, he'll get it. And, and people will catch on. Yeah, you know. But then what I'm you have uh, then you have people like Alpha M. I don't know if you, <laughs> you saw that oh, video, right? Oh God! I mean, the, yeah, that, that's that's uh, a different story. Yeah, yeah. Alpha M threw itself under the bus with that one, but yeah. Well, for the people out there, <laughs> if, you, if you've been living under a rock or you need to watch correcting, Alpha M is uh, he's a powerful guy on YouTube. He has yeah. millions of followers, and he's big into fashion. So I, I used to follow him for years, to be honest with you. Right. I, I love the guy. He was on Shark Tank. I mean. Very well spoken, Aaron Aaron Marino, I think yeah, his name. Uh -huh. And uh, anyways, he he got in bed with uh, movement watches and not promoting them for a long time. Which you know, whatever, I, they're fashion watches. I never really paid attention to that segment of his videos. But the moment that he came out with that video, why five reasons? I think five reasons why movement watches are better than Rolex. Oh my right. goodness! And then I he mean, owned like three or four Rolexes. And I'm like, oh, of course, no, of course, the wow. guy owns Rolexes. I mean, right, he knows the quality. The only reason he made that video is because they paid him a ton of money. Oh, and yeah. I know Teddy Baldessar came out and interviewed him, and he basically said, it was a joke, guys. And it's like, right. no, it wasn't. We we all know that you were very serious about it. I, I, I didn't see the humor in that, in that video. No. And actually, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, what I did, I unfollowed him. And I, ever since then, I haven't really mm -hmm. been watching his videos. And the reason why is because... I just, his credibility to me is just dead because right. I could see right through it. I, I know that he knows that movement watches right. in no way, shape, or form are better than a Rolex or even in par with a Rolex. So you just kind of sold yourself out. So, I mean, I, I, I think if I was Alpha M, I would not have compared them to Rolex, but I would have just gave five reasons why at this moment MVMT is the best watch out right now. <laughs> yeah, or or you say, know what hey, I mean? or or for the money, let's 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 say you know you're paying this much money for this right. Rolex and you're paying this much money for for this watch. Right. Here are five reasons why I think right. this watch is a better value than this, or some some just wording. Right, which I think you know? that was one of the five <clears throat> reasons was value that he had put up there. I think was one of the I think five I mean, reasons. The, the whole main thing about the video, though, the whole takeaway was. <laughs> This is better than this. Oh, this is like no, shit. it's not. You just, right. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. But um, my last question, I guess, about Invicta, and I know we could go on and on. There's so much to talk about, but yes, it's, sir. Uh, for the most part, they have a very aggressive look. So, uh -huh. in your opinion, if you think uh, Invicta changed that aggressive look in their designs, more collectors will actually respect the brand. Nope. <laughs> no, nope. just straight up no. <laughs> no, 
I mean, because it's already out there. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing Invicta can do to change that. And not only that, like, the Invicta community is, like, really, really tight. You know what I mean? Like, they have crazy fans. You know what I'm saying? They are very successful, and their fans love what they do, no matter how aggressive the styles get. You know what I mean? The crazier, the better for some of these. The crazier, guys. the better, huh? So they're going to yeah. come up with something with unicorn shooting out of it, and people are going to love it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And they'll love it. You know what I mean? Um, no, I don't think it'd change anything. You know okay. what I mean? Well, I, I've heard, going back to the whole hate thing, uh, I know there's a lot of hate towards Invicta, but I've also seen the the opposite end of the spectrum. I've seen a lot of Invicta collectors hating on other people because they don't like Invicta or something. It's, it's almost like there's this rivalry between Invicta lovers and like the whole entire watch world. Have you seen that as well? I, I, I had one comment from a guy. This is like, okay, this is probably the only comment that I had on one of my watch game videos. I had one guy tell me that one of the watches I got from watch game was trash. And that was like it. So, you know, generally when I get stuff like that, I go and I look at their channel. And this guy loves Invicta. And I'm thinking like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. For Invicta to be one of the most hated watch brands ever... You know what I mean? Now, he's telling me this watch is garbage, but you got a whole slew of people who dislike Invicta. Then I said to my man, who the hell is this guy to tell me that and he like Invicta? You see what I'm saying? Like, it was kind of like really, really hypocritical to me, and I had never like seen that before from an Invicta collector. Yeah, no, I, I, you know I mean... mean. No, I, I've actually seen it a, a, a few times. I know there's this guy, Fat Cat or something. He's like a huge Invicta collector. On the yeah, show. yeah, I'm familiar with Fat Cat. Okay, yeah. so I think he got into it with this other guy. And, and forgive me, I, I don't know the name of his channel. And I, uh, I it, it just went right over my head. But he is a huge uh, Rolex, you know, collector. And I you think you're talking about the guy from, uh, it's complicated. It's complicated. They, yeah, you know, what's his yeah. name? Uh, Steve, I don't know his name. It's not Steve. Uh, yeah, but anyways, yeah, they just kind of went back and forth, and, and yeah. it was just so funny. And it's like, look, guys, can we just put this to rest at the end of the day? Right, right. We're both, we, we all love watches. Like, right, just, yeah, the, yeah. The, the feel, aesthetic of it. I feel like that, too, but sometimes it gets entertaining, man. Well, of it's course. Sometimes of course. It, it gets <laughs> entertaining. Like, the between him and Fat Cat, like, it got really... Really entertainment, entertaining, it did. It did. And, no, it, and I'm just kind of like it's foolish, it's silly, and you know what? I should be caught up in shit like that and laughing, and you know what I'm saying. But it was very, very entertaining. <laughs> you but know what I mean? But also think about this: to you and I, it was entertaining because we know about watches, and it's like, right. oh, hey, But imagine a poor guy just getting into watches, and he takes it. Right. And a good watch, and then right. he sees things like that online. He, right. He's going to be turned off immediately and said, "Well, right. wait a minute, people that yeah, love watches." Think this way. I rather not be part of that community. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that 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 pretty much about covers everything uh, with Watch Gang with Invicta and uh, I. Yeah, this has been a really fun episode to make and, and really interesting topics. I know there's probably a lot more that I that I miss and we could definitely cover in right. future episodes. For sure. But since I I, I do have you. Uh, here on this podcast, I want to publicly invite you to another episode where I want to cover like homage pieces. Is that something you'd be interested in? Uh, in Absolutely. Doing again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know. I, I guess in a nutshell, just this kind of, I, I want to get your take on homage pieces. How, how do you feel about them? Um, I don't have a problem with homage pieces. And and you see yeah. the the thing is that I do, <laughs> right? Right. So that, I think I think that's gonna make for a very interesting yeah. uh, uh, topic in the, right. in the next episode. But uh, yeah. but yeah. Anyway, so tell the good people where they can find you. Um, you can find me on you YouTube at uh Ross Wristwatch Love, um the Purple Underground, um, Nerd Life Five One Three, um also on Instagram at uh Ross Wristwatch Love, uh Facebook Perry Ross. So that's about You're it. Just everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, awesome. Well, Pete, thank you so much for uh, joining me. I really right. do appreciate it. And we it. did forget to do the wristwatch check this morning. 
You know, you, you are absolutely right. And today, uh, actually, it's funny you, you say that um, I am wearing my Speedy. Uh, and this is the automatic version. It's not the professional. Right. It's the reverse Panda. And, uh, yeah, this was a very affordable piece. This is a vintage piece from the 90s. I think I got it for less than $1,300. It's actually the right. most expensive watch in my collection. And I, I do like it a lot. Um, it, it, and, and it's funny. I call it a reverse panda because it has uh, the silver subdials um, and the black dial. And somebody in, the, in another video when I did a collaboration uh, with another YouTuber, they called me out on it, believe it or not. They're like, that is not a panda. Those subdials right. are not white. They're silver. I'm like, we'll call it a dirty panda then. I don't know. Right. You know I'm like, yeah. people are just crazy out there. Man. And right. what, what are you wearing? Uh, another Seiko, man. A Seiko. Uh, nice. Another one. Um, SKS, uh, I think. SKS 593. Uh, yeah. What kind of movement is it having? Um, it's an automatic movement. Nice. Do you know no. which one? 7S26? So, uh, I have no clue. <laughs> Perfect. Good answer. No <laughs> I'll edit that out. No clue. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's cool. No. No, I know. Yesterday, we in our in our episode yesterday, guys, we we started off with the wristwatch check, which I typically never do, but I, I wanted to do, and yeah, I completely forgot it. So thanks, right. thanks for calling me out on that. Yeah. I, I do appreciate it. But yeah. guys, you can find me at uh, SoCal Watch Reviews on YouTube and at SoCal Watch Reviews on Instagram, and that's pretty much all the social media. No, 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 no. This is Japanese course. I just took it off and looked at it. it's Japanese course. This ain't that automatic. Oh, Japanese course. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's course. Cool. It's course. Well, okay. it's still it's still in house. Yeah. I, I yeah. appreciate that, and that's that's something we yeah. can talk about in the in the homage video because obviously a lot of people wear. I mean, use the Seiko movements. So right. That's definitely something I'm going to cover. But, anyways, thank you for joining us. Uh, another episode. This is episode three, and as always, guys, stay humble. Absolutely. <laughs>